Alright guys, so what you just saw was a little excerpt from a album release promo that I just did with an artist called Cal Scrooby. Um, down in the description below, I'll link that entire promo. It's a minute long. Check it out. Um, and if you like hip-hop, you like rap, go check out Cal Scrooby because he is the bomb. So that entire sequence, all the smoke and fire, was done really quickly and efficiently. Um, with Embergen brought over to Cinema 4D and rendered with Octane. So I'm going to be walking us through today how to get a result in Embergen quickly by using one of their presets, exporting the VDB out, bringing it into Cinema 4D, and getting Octane to work with that VDB. So let's get started. First thing, you can go to um, JengaFX.com and download a free trial of Embergen. And I guess, starting right now, if you have an Octane subscription, this is supposed to be um, included and free. I haven't quite been able to figure out how to get that working. I'm paying for the subscription right now, but once I figure that out, um, that's going to be sweet. Okay, so once you get that downloaded, uh, installed, you're going to open up Embergen, and boom, you already have real-time fire going on. This is the default uh, setting here. So just to get things moving quickly, I can do a tutorial for Embergen down the road if you guys would like, just comment. Um, it's a really intuitive program, so I can knock something out pretty quickly for you guys. But um, what we're going to do right now, just to speed things along, is open up one of their many, many presets that come installed. You can see here, there's just all kinds of presets, and they all look great. We're going to go with the Fire Tornado. Um, to start here, you can see this uh, software is pretty incredible so this is all real time you can make changes to the simulation um, and watch your changes happen anybody who's used like turbulence FD or anything or X particles in the past to do fire you understand how absolutely insane um, this program is alright so we have our fire here this is what we're gonna wanna bring over to Cinema 4D what we need to do is go to our simulation tab here or node drag a simulation down, release, and go to export VDB. Now from here, we're just going to select where we want to export our VDB. You're going to want to put it into a folder because it renders a file for each individual frame. So if you just throw that on your desktop, you're going to have, you know, a hundred files sitting on there. So make sure you put it in a folder. I already have this VDB exported out, so I'm not going to worry about doing that at this moment. There's a couple steps that you want to take here. So if I press R, it's going to reset the um, simulation here. And we can see that it really starts getting going around the 120 to 140 mark here. So I'm going to actually start my first frame at 140. That way we don't have all these frames exported out of it ramping up and getting started here. And then we'll say we'll render out or export out, I keep saying render, we're going to export out 50 frames. Frame stride is, so say you want this to be going a lot faster, say you set this to 2, it's going to export out every other frame, so when you bring that VDB into Cinema 4D, it's going to be going a lot faster, so if you want like a speed up ramp, um, you can set this to 2. I'm just going to set it to 1 because I like the speed of this going right now. Now before we hit export, we're going to want to go into simulation, go down to upscaling. Now, I don't recommend going all the way to times 4 because it either freezes or just chugs this thing down to almost unusable levels. So if you hit times 3, you're going to see if you watch over here, the quality of the fire and the smoke is going to go up quite a bit, but it's going to kill our frame rate. So I click apply new resolution down here. It's going to restart, and you can see how it just crushed our frame right here, but there's going to be a lot more detail in the fire and the smoke, and you can already see that pretty well. Another thing that you're going to want to do here is have export VDB node selected. Scroll down to the bottom, and for coordinate system, um, its default value is Z up left-handed. Um, that is not how Cinema 4D works. Cinema 4D uh, Y is up right-handed. 
Okay, so in order to export our VDB, we'll click on to the node, click export now. It's going to run through all of the uh, frames leading up to where we started, and then it'll start uh, exporting out those files into the place that you designated it to. I've already done this, so we're going to skip ahead. All right, so I have a super simple setup here right now, just to play with the figure for scale um, and a couple lights and an octane camera. So the first thing that we need to do to get um, our simulation up and going here is go to objects. This is in the octane live viewer window, objects, octane VDB volume. When we select that and go to the VDB tab here, we have a couple options that we need to get right before we actually load in our VDB. Now, end is one of the key ones. Um, I know for a fact that I rend or I exported out 50 frames from Embergen, so I'm going to hit 50 here. And for digits, I'll explain this here in a second, I know that it is 4. So you want to get these two things right because if they're off even by a frame, sometimes it'll just crash your whole um, system here when you import the VDB. So make sure these are right before you start this next process. So we're going to click this button here, and I have my VDB already loaded up here. Now you can see this is where the four digits comes from. For each frame, there's four digits, so we have four down here, and that's how it reads which one it goes to for each frame. I think X particles does six frames, so then you'd have six down here, but Embergen is four. So we're going to select the first one, hit open. It's going to load for a second, and there we go everything's loaded in. Okay, so I'm going to turn my lights on so we can see what's going on here. Okay, so we have smoke in our scene, but we see no fire, and the fire is the cool part about a fire tornado. So we want to go to medium, and over here we select fire, and right off the bat our results are not very promising, so we need to go in and tweak some settings. We're going to select our volume medium. First thing that I like to do is go into the emission ramp down here, uh, in the emission drop down. Select that, and then you're going to want to drop down this little doodad. Go to load preset, flame one, and then I like to drop out the red. You can just click and drag down on the red. I don't typically see a whole lot of bright red in flames, so I usually drop that out. Now, if we go up one level, this is where the magic happens, density and volume step length. If you can see, the lower your volume, volume step length goes, the longer your render times are going to take, but the better your results are. So you can see the moment I start dragging this down, it kind of cranks at my graphics cards, but this is how you get your good looking results. And then you can play with your, I'm going to turn the lights off now that we have fire. We can play with our the thickness of our smoke with the density and drag this up a little bit. Now we're seeing we're getting some decent results. I'm going to bring the density back down a little bit and you can there's a couple different things you can do to make the fire stick out a little bit more. You can drop the volume step length even more, bring your density up just a little bit. Or you can go to your emission tab down here, select emission. And this is pretty much just a light source. You can bring this up and it's going to emit more light from the fire. Then to make it look cooler, because we like cooler, you can open up your post-processing in your Octane camera tag, add some bloom, see if my cards can keep up here. I'm running a 2080 Titan, or TI, a 1080 Ti, and then I have a slave machine that's running two 1080 Ti's, and this still can take a little bit. But the magic of this whole thing is is usually like if anybody's used Turbulence FD before, Fume Effects, or you know the pain of when you're trying to make subtle adjustments um, to your fire simulation and waiting five minutes, you know, for your simulation to come through and see what actually happened. Um, this Ember Gen shaves off so much time just playing around with the settings and getting your fire right and your smoke right and it saves you a ton of time on the front end and then obviously come render time it can get a little slow but you've shaved off a ton of time already all right so one last thing that i'd like to point out um for volumes in octane is 
um, in your Octane camera tag, going to Camera Imager, selecting Enable, and this Spectral AI Denoiser, enable it, and then it Denoise Volumes is another one that you have to select. What that'll do is once you're done, I'm going to drop down my step length here a little bit just so I can speed up this render a little bit. Once this is done, I'll show you. If you click on Denoise here, you can see all this noise that's happening on the edges. You click Denoise and it's, it's already smoothed all that out so you don't have to render as many samples. Alright guys, so if you have any questions, leave some comments down below. I know I kind of sped through this, but um, it's a fairly simple process. Um, when I made the scene that I showed at the beginning, I just had probably eight different VDB volumes that I imported. Um, I changed the smoke or the fire color to purple or a pink. I guess I can show you how to do that really quick. Go back into your VDB volume, medium, volume medium. Go into your emission. Nope. Go back down into your emission ramp and you can change this orange by double clicking on the little drop down there. Bring it up to I did pink. And there you go. Now you have pink fire. And if we, you know, drop back down our volume step length, we're going to get some more of that smoke showing here. All right, guys, that pretty much covers that topic. Once again, if you want to see the full uh, version of that uh, album promo that I did, um, check it out in the description down below. Um, if you liked what you saw here, do the typical thing that the typical YouTubers ask you to do. Subscribe, like, comment, do all the goodness if you want to. Alright guys, I'll see you on the next one.